Hey, these videos take ages to research and edit, especially with the addition of subtitles, so please, click on that big red subscribe button if you haven't already and do one more thing. Enjoy the video. It's an absolute tragedy. This year's quote unquote huge mistake, so to say, is the complete opposite of last year's video. I'm talking about beginner players who have extremely good accuracy, are able to stream and maybe don't finger lock, but they are struggling to learn how to jump. Or even for those accuracy players, they are struggling to improve in any form. Now, obviously, I'm not claiming this is a problem for all beginner players, or even the majority of the player base. And I'm not expecting this video to blow up. I'm just doing this for fun to help some of you guys out because this really is as much of a bottleneck as it is for the jump one tricks last year. On that note, if you are a jump one trick and are struggling to understand why you can't stream, beginner or not, please do check out the video from last year. It'll get you going in the right direction. Today's video is kind of aim part two and heavily focuses on jumps, but just remember that aim isn't all about jumps. You've got awkward linear patterns, maybe with low AR as well, cut streams requiring some sort of snappy flow aim, and of course many other ways of aiming. I will add more parts to this series as time goes on, but for today, it's mostly about the jumps. Timestamps are on screen right now and in the description down below. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Oh, sorry for interrupting again. Just another quick but very important message. I've heard that a few people feel like my advice and videos are objective or absolute. I think it's because my voice sounds assertive, so I'm really sorry that my videos sound that way. Please don't feel like I'm forcing you to do something. You're free to do whatever you want in Osu. I will try my best from now on to create videos that aim to advise instead of, you know, demand and command. Usu is entirely subjective and preferential, so all of my videos, including this one, are not factual. They are all opinion based. If your profile happens to look like this one in the video, don't worry about it, don't be ashamed. There's no problem with it if you enjoy playing the game that way. I'm just trying to help out people like this if they're stuck. I hope that's clear now, so let's carry on. I guess if we're going to be using the exact same title, we might as well copy its format. It starts off with a profile review it seems, and there's some really chill background music so let's cue that up. Alright, there we go. Now, this is an example of a profile which is something that I personally dislike the most for improvement. The keywords being for improvement, and I'll explain why in a few minutes. Let's just first talk about anything quote unquote good I have to say about this profile. Extremely high accuracy. That's literally all I have to say about this profile. Okay, so I imagine some of you may be thinking, wow, that's really good, but I want to argue that it's actually not in this case. If anything, it's preventing this person from improving, and here's my reasoning for it. The lack of experience at the beginner stage of the journey of anything in life, such as learning skills, going to the gym, or playing osu in this case, usually leads to rapid, almost exponential growth in progress. In the gym, we like to call it newbie gains, since the gym newbie is probably working out for the first time in their life. In basic terms, it's because they're working their muscles harder than ever before, and so the body responds actively to such dramatic changes. The same kind of analogy applies to Osu as well. Maybe it's the first time you've had to interpret so many objects coming on the screen, the first time you've had to coordinate your fingers so well, the first time you've had to react and aim so quickly on these patterns. This growth spike in the improvement journey is the result of you getting attached and hooked onto the game for the first time, and so you're playing the game a lot, understanding how to read, how to tap and how to aim, making many mistakes and that's okay, because you learn from them and we make mistakes so we can improve. That's why when you're new to the game, say under 300 hours as a rough estimate, I will just say play more, because it's really just as simple as that. I don't want to write an essay and massively overcomplicate the game for you. It doesn't help you and overcomplication is bad, but I'll talk about overcomplication in another video. I'll say it again, we make mistakes so we can improve, we challenge ourselves so we can improve. It's fine to have A's, B's, even C ranks as a beginner, that's normal. Heck, even some top players have it on their profiles too, there's nothing wrong with that at all. They are just challenging themselves. But unfortunately for this player, it seems like they're not willing to do so. No wonder they're struggling to improve. They are not willing to step outside their comfort zone and challenge themselves. They are not exploiting this potential for exponential growth. They are limiting themselves by actively trying to perfect whatever they're doing, which I believe to be a massive waste of time at this stage. 
especially when this mod combination is seen in their top plays. One mod, two mod, three mod, even four mod on one to two star maps. All right, now they might say, but Tony, I'm learning all the mods since you told me it's important to have a diverse skill set. So I'll respond with, okay, but look at the maps you're putting mods on. They are one to two star maps, which means the patterns are extremely simple. No bursts, no jumps, no complex patterns at all. You're not training anything by playing at this level forever. And they're not even training the skill sets that you think they're related to, because actually they're not even related at all. The world of Double Time generally revolves around higher BPM bursts, higher AR reading, higher BPM jumps, higher BPM finger control, but there are no such patterns at the 1-2 to two star range. All DT does here is make you tap ever so slightly faster with slightly higher AR, OD and HP. The world of Hard Rock generally revolves around higher OD, higher AR, higher CS and therefore smaller circles, but the level that it increases by at this star rating is insignificant. You are not learning how to act a variety of patterns like jumps, bursts and streams at a significantly hard OD like OD10. And again, there is no such variety of patterns at this low of a star range. The circle size is not even small either. It's pretty much average circle size now. And that's even after 3 mod is applied which combines DT and HR. The AR is not high, it's still AR9 on most maps at this level, which is still again kind of the average kind of AR. Now, Hidden. Hidden can be a preferential mod and so we have hidden players like CookieZ, Zootinator, Nameless Player, etc. People who like to play the game without approach circles. There are many players who prefer playing the game this way. But this player isn't a hidden player. It looks like they're doing it for the sake of 3 mod or even 4 mod I guess. Again, they are not learning anything relevant in the hidden skill set because they aren't learning how to do hidden streams, bursts, jumps, etc. And maybe most importantly, the variety of AR alongside such complex patterns which makes it hard to read. Even low AR at this level of play is not significant. There are no variety of patterns down here. It is too simple. So any changes in difficulty values like OD, AR, CS, etc. that have been done by adding mods at this early on in the game could have just been done by increasing star rating and playing without mods, which is what I suggest for players like these. As you progress the star rating without mods, you'll very often find that naturally, maps are higher OD, higher AR, higher CS and much more already. All of that and the patterns get harder. If you want to improve at this stage, just increase the star rating and worry about mods later, like the mid 5 star range. They are practically irrelevant at this early on in the game but again, I'm not stopping you if you enjoy playing them, I'm just saying it's not practical for improvement in my opinion. A video on when, why and how to learn mods is coming another day. This person did also ask me how to get better at jumps, because they're bad at jumps. And it's really just as simple as saying, you're bad at jumps because you don't play jumps. They were too busy focusing on this strange mod combination which is irrelevant to all of the skill sets they think they're trying to target and irrelevant for improvement in general, at least at this early on in the game. You're bad at a skill because you don't play enough of that skill. And I know some of you might be thinking, oh that's so obvious forehead. But Osu is actually that simple. That simple fact is enough to allow you to improve at anything in Osu and it's really quite strange that I have to say that because some of you haven't realised it yet. That includes the stream players, consistency players, tech players asking me, Tony, how do I improve at jumps? And then I have this really tragic answer of saying you just play jump maps, because in Osu that's really how simple it has to be. Now obviously don't go crashing into 10 star jump maps and praying that RNG works in your favour, because that's not how it works. I believe that learning skills thoroughly and properly starts from the basics and working up from there, so that you don't miss anything. Starting from the bottom and grinding to the top. The bottom for jumps being the easiest place that you can start from, and in my opinion, I think that will be the jump farm maps, so go and download those. Wait, didn't you say jump farm maps were bad in the 2020 video? You told me to delete them, didn't you? And yeah, you're right, I did say that, but the video was made to enforce the idea that jump one tricking PP farm maps at the beginner level was particularly bad, let alone one tricking any skill set, even streams. Stream one tricks are not much better than jump one tricks and you guys are probably struggling to play jumps so why not learn how to play them? Also, stream farm maps exist too, you know, and really farm maps exist for any skill set. Stream players have billions of sidetrack days, consistency players have jump consistency map sets like Tsukunami, Dear Brave, 
Or if they're really good at streams too, then they've got Yomi Yori, Uta, etc. Speed players have Plasma Gun, several. You could argue that United will one day be a common speed farm map in a few years. Tech farm, finger control farm probably exists too since, well, farm exists everywhere. Especially now that there's this finger control rework coming up in mind. Top players farm as well, and I'm not saying farm plays are bad. Heck, I don't think I can even do some of these farm plays myself. I'm just saying don't be afraid of farming. Anyone that judges you for having farm in your top plays is completely delusional. The PP system favours some patterns more than others, that's just how it is. Alright, so for those of you who want a slightly more detailed description of why stream players, tech players, forward players etc suck at jumps instead of you haven't played jump maps lol, here it is. All the maps that you've specialised in have required less reaction time and less aiming muscle memory to land such patterns. You don't need reaction time or this kind of aiming muscle memory to follow a stream. The circles appear so close together and less abruptly, it's easy to follow. Same with two star maps, same with tech maps, consistency maps that have less jumps in them etc. No wonder you go cross-eyed on these wider jumps. You're like a slug basically, you have no reaction times. Okay fine, you have good reading, good patience, good finger control, that's great, but it's not going to carry you on wide jumps. You're missing what these 6 digit jump map farmers have. You need a sense of automatic cursor control which comes from muscle memory and reaction. The part 1 of my aim guide which talks about my understanding of aim as 99% reading, 1% raw aim, is not entirely correct as a result. It is in fact variable, it depends on the player and depends on the map. And well, aim doesn't have to be split into these two categories anyway, it's just an analogy. The basic understanding of where to move your pen or mouse as a result of muscle memory is crucial to good aim. You basically use this idea to preemptively move the cursor after reacting to a circle on the screen, and then your reading allows you to adjust and control that aim. I think that's a better way of putting it. I don't believe many players can track every single circle on cross screen jumps, especially when they're this fast, so that's where this idea of reaction and muscle memory helps out with aim. I guess that's why people say they can just look at the middle of the screen or something like that, but they can still land such cross screen jumps. To build better reaction times and aiming muscle memory, go ahead and re-download those jump farm maps. Notable mappers are Sotarx, Fiery Rage, Browiak, Taiyang, Log Off Now, Huari and many more which I'll put down in the description below. As with learning any skill, you go however low you need to go. It could be mid 5 stars, low 5 stars, high 4 stars, mid 4 stars etc. Though, jumps don't really exist below their low 4 star range. They're really too slow to reap any benefits from. I have no accuracy requirements or any detailed criteria. It's not a rehabilitation process and I'm not here to hold your hand. I've just given you the maps, so you do the play more. Fail, sometime later, pass, sometime later, FC and move on. Maybe hundreds of hours later, you reach the mid 5 stars and now many new paths to getting better at jumps expands further. As I said before, you can start to learn mods once you've reached this kind of mid 5 star range because now for example, you can learn to DT 3 to 4 star maps. What used to be relatively low BPM requiring practically no reaction time at all, is now great for improving your aim and reaction times after DT is added. Higher BPM jumps and bursts, higher AR, higher OD etc, all beneficial to getting better at jumps. The world of jump consistency maps are opened up to you as well, and just a shout out to map sets like Routine, Flower Dance, Ml... Ml... Mio... Mioda Krev. Have a go at those. They might be challenging at first, but remember you always need to challenge yourself to improve. But as I said before, aim isn't all about the jumps, and so you can challenge your aim even further by playing more uncomfortable patterns. They can be found in older map sets as far back as 2013, or even old style mapping. The lower AR makes it quite hard to read and control your aim, but hey, that's just a weakness that you can improve on. Bruh, even jump maps from 2017 are extremely cursed, I mean, what is this? What is that? One last thing, the world of unranked jump training maps is opened up to you as well. Do whatever you want now that you've got the basic fundamentals of jumps. Though I do advise that you play other skill sets from time to time in your OSU routine, so you don't end up being a one trick. For example, I like to warm up my sessions with low AR maps, as well as streams before diving right into higher AR and reaction based stuff like jumps and DT. That's all I really wanted to cover, so let's jump right into a conclusion. To be honest, I can't believe I've had to make a video saying, to learn how to play jumps, you play jump maps, but you know, here we are. You'll often find that learning skills in Osu is a lot simpler than it actually sounds. 
having accuracy that is too good hinders your improvements because you are afraid of stepping outside your comfort zone. It applies to any stage in the Osu journey, but I think it's particularly wasteful at the beginner levels of play because at this stage you can improve the fastest. So play the game, explore the game and don't be afraid of making mistakes, bad accuracy, B ranks or even C ranks. Find a middle ground between improvement and comfortability. If I had to give a range for accuracy, I'd probably say around 95 to high 98 since that range kind of respects the idea the most. Stream players, consistency players, tech players and those 2 star 4 mod players, they suck at jumps because they haven't built muscle memory for aiming and their reaction times are slow. Go play jump maps, PP farm maps, DT farm maps, they're all easy to learn jumps from and then you can expand the skill set from there if you wanted to. Coming up next in the aim guide are topics like the importance of low AR and easy and how it could potentially improve your aim control. So be sure to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already. That's all I really wanted to talk about, so hopefully I'll see you all in the next video. Peace!